Well, greetings from New York. Uh, my name is Nader Hashemi. We are, we are on the second day of a hunger strike here um, outside of the United Nations. There's an incredible amount of moral energy, excitement, enthusiasm, and hope um, that has been generated as a result of this event. We're hoping that some of this energy and enthusiasm can be transferred from New York City to Vancouver, Canada, and that you can continue the efforts that we have started here. I just want to emphasize um, to the people watching this video that we are living through very important and historic times in terms of the struggle for democracy in Iran. And it's incredibly important that those people who care about this issue come together and rally around a common agenda that can bring this movement forward. And that's a, an agenda that uh, comprises, I think, three, in my view, fundamental principles. One, a commitment to democracy, the idea that people fundamentally are sovereign in a political system, not any minority of people. Number two, basic respect for human rights, as embodied in the U UN Declaration of Human Rights. And third, and most importantly, I think for Iranians, Iranian Americans, people interested in the struggle for democracy in Iran, appreciating the principle, the centrality of nonviolent political resistance. I'm asked by many people, some of them my students, what can we do at this moment to help the struggle for democracy in Iran? I think one of the things you can do is to try and educate yourself. I think reading Mahatma Gandhi's autobiography, studying the political activism and legacy of Martin Luther King Jr., uh, learning from the organizational sophistication of the African National Congress and how they brought democracy uh, t to South Africa in the 1980s and into the 1990s are things that people can do. Um, uh, Politics have shifted in Iran, and they've shifted, I think, in a very encouraging way. This green movement is really anchored in the hopes and aspirations and the activities of a new generation that has emerged in Iran, a generation that rejects the ideological politics and factionalism and bogus political debates of their parents' generation. They are educated, they're globalized, um, they're sophisticated, some are religious, some are secular. These issues don't matter for them. What matters is democracy, human rights, and nonviolence. And their success in Iran is going to be dependent on support, mobilization, encouragement, and enthusiasm from those people who support their cause living abroad, particularly in Canada, where you have the freedom to organize, to mobilize, and to come to, with, and, and to, come to, their, to their support. And I think the freedom that you have in Canada is not something to be taken lightly. It's the, it comes with responsibility. You have the ability to organize and mobilize without anyone from the Canadian state trying to repress you or throw you in jail. Uh, and so I think with that freedom goes responsibility. And so I know you're going to be gathering in a few days to um, support uh, the struggle for human rights and democracy in Iran. I'm hoping that this is going to be the beginning of a, uh, a series of events. Um, to quote from Hamid Dabashi, who I think was just interviewed here, you know, this is not a, uh, a sprint, this is a marathon. Um, there's, no going to, there's not going to be an easy or clear victory within the short term. And so I think people who are interested in this cause have to be committed to a long-term struggle of um, organization, of mobilization, of accepting a plurality of different political views, but rallying around a common agenda that's rooted fundamentally, I think in my view, in nonviolent social activism and resistance. Um, I'm hoping it's the beginning of many things and I'm hoping you can link with other groups around the world that are fighting for the same cause. Best of luck.